Jaisleen ji, welcome to the exhibition all about Adrak. It's an honor to have you here. Very, very excited. Um, you've had a long association with the crafts and we'd love to hear about, if we could start from the start, we'd love to hear about how your journey started and your association with Adrak. Uh, Kritika, lovely to be here in this museum and to be surrounded by these pieces of Ajrak. And uh, yes, it's been a long journey. It was in 1956 that I started on a project for revival of textiles. And it was so strange that for this vast country, with its uh, wonderful uh, range of textiles, the ministry sanctioned 21,000 rupees. Gosh. How they expected us to do any work is besides. But anyway, we started. So I went to Kutch. Very few people knew of Kutch. Kutch was a strange place. Mm. And I went for the first time in 1956. And uh, it was still a walled town where the doors used to close and uh, in the night had opened in the morning. And if you were a traveler and had not come back in time, well, you just hung outside. Wow. And, and I remember it was uh, the food that you ate was full of sand because the desert was very near and the high winds which were blowing would carry the sand into our dal and our roti and oh, it was really something. But it was fascinating the place. I went there primarily to revive Mochi Bharat and I failed because they said that those who did Mochi Bharat, that exquisite embroidery, are no longer available. But in the process, I also managed to see other crafts, and one of them was Ajrak. Wow. Mm. And at and visited the village, and went mm. to Mandvi, and you won't believe it that by accident we lost our way, mm. and we went into the Bunny area. Wow. Mm. And. We were so frightened mm -hmm. that we might get lost and go into Pakistan and be arrested. That we were so relieved in the night when we saw somebody waving a lantern and we managed to go to that place. And there were all these people on this high platform of mud with their eyes shining in the night and their jewelry, <laughs> wondering who these people were. And when the car stopped, and I always wore a wow. sari hmm. whenever mm -hmm. I traveled. I never wore, in any case, I've always worn a sari. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got out of the car and everybody said, <gasps> as if some person from the Mars had come. <laughs> it was they uncharted had, territory. Yeah, wow. yeah, they had never seen anybody wow. from mm. outside, mm. and especially a woman. The men used to go out and they would see. So some of them who had seen, a, had been outside to the city and seen a movie, mm. said, film star hai. They <laughs> said, tara hai, tara hai. <laughs> and while I was looking at them, they were looking at me and they dragged me inside and that was my introduction and there I examined what they were wearing and they were examining what I was wearing and, and there I saw Ajrak for the first time. Wow. Because mm -hmm. the Maldharis mm -hmm. Uh, who lived in that area, they mm -hmm. used it, and the mm -hmm. Meghwals used it, mm -hmm. you see. So I said, Ye kaha se hai? So they said that uh, it's from the town, 
you know, and and that's how, which led us to Dwarka. Okay. But at that time when I went, there was nothing really uh, except that they were printing. Mm. They were printing mm. uh, for the people, and yet they were beautiful. Mm. But just for the local community, at that local point they were just printing just the to meet the demand. In any case, yeah. the local community had a tremendous demand because mm. most men required two to three. Lungi, you know, turbans. lungi, mm -hmm. uh, chadar, mm -hmm. and even pagdi. So two sets of, of, of very high quality. Three, no high quality. Whatever was there, whatever, whatever was they there. could afford. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. the, they, they were, uh, you see, and these were being used by them. So mm -hmm. there was a demand, all right. Mm -hmm. Then, in 1990. Seven. Mm -hmm. uh, no, sorry, uh, 1957. Mm -hmm. Kamla Devi ji went to Kutch, and I accompanied her. Mm -hmm. And I told her about this village, Dhamarka, mm -hmm. and we went to Dhamarka, mm -hmm. and we met Muhammad Bhai. And she okay. asked him, uh, "Can you do vegetable dyes?" Mm -hmm. He said, "I used to do them, but I've forgotten." So she, you know, was a very persuasive woman, mm -hmm. and she. Uh, she persuaded him, mm -hmm. and he said, and she said, you know, and we had a miserable budget or no budget or no cash. Right. From her own pocket, she gave him a hundred rupees. Wow, Can and a hundred rupees him? were a lot back in the day. <laughs> she yeah. gave him a hundred rupees and said, "Aap hamare liye shuru to kar lo." He mm -hmm. says, "Isse to kuch bhi nahi hoga." Oh. She <laughs> said, "I will go back and I'll send you." Mm -hmm. Then through the district industries officer, mm -hmm. she was able to send some more money to him and Muhammad Bai started mm -hmm. to collect the material to do the vegetable dyes. Mm -hmm. It took a long time for the vegetable dyes to happen, mm -hmm. but finally they did do mm -hmm. uh, the vegetable dyes, mm -hmm. which was indigo, uh, alizarine, mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, the uh, majit, mm -hmm. and then the iron oxide, which they used to do this. Mm -hmm. uh, so the uh, journey. Yeah. Hmm. With Ajrak began slowly. Mm -hmm. What what kind of products were they making? For especially with vegetable dyes. They were this making start off this. With. They, they you know hmm. because local people couldn't afford to pay that prices. Hmm. So we persuaded Muhammad Bhai hmm. to make a few of these chadars because hmm. he was used to no point in introducing something new. Right. Then we asked him to make a couple of saris. Okay. And then we persuaded him to uh, make saris with the traditional ajrak, mm -hmm. like the one I am wearing. It's beautiful, you know, <laughs> mm -hmm. which is a very fine uh, mm -hmm. uh, ajrak, which is from the workshop mm -hmm. of Muhammad Bhai's son, because Muhammad mm -hmm. Bhai is no more, mm -hmm. but his entire family mm -hmm. is involved with it. So the cottage industries emporium mm -hmm. uh, began to order saris with them. Then other places, the other person who did a lot of work with them was Archana Shah. Mm -hmm. Later on, okay. when she began her bandhage, mm -hmm. the shop bought a lot of stuff mm -hmm. uh, from him. Uh, Fab India. And various mm. others and people from Bombay. Mm. So he, Muhammad Bai, was the one who started uh, producing for uh, for the outside market. Mm. He was the first one. He so from uh, from uh, catering to a very traditional clientele for yes. ages, they suddenly yeah. moved to yeah. catering to That's other right. people. That's right. How, was that journey a little bumpy? How were the yeah. advisories? 
I mean, the point some... is that mm. in the beginning, mm. you know, he w it is hard mm. because vegetable dyeing is difficult. And but when he found that there was a clientele, mm. and then a sense of pride. Mm. And today, yeah. I mean, like his son has been given a doctorate, yeah. and uh, his children have been educated, mm. and some of the. A uh, wonderful abstract work, which is in this exhibition, mm. done on gaji, cotton and silk combined, mm. uh, um, mushroom and uh, silk tradition, mm. uh, is the work of uh, his family mm. uh, youngsters. I think mm. fourth generation after Muhammad Bai, wow. uh, and mm. they. This is the work which has been done very recently. Mm. And uh, one feels so proud, so yeah. bumpy, yes, mm. difficult, yes. It wasn't till, uh, you know, I left India to work in Iran in 1970. By that time, ajrak was being produced, mm. vegetable dyed ajrak was being produced. Wow. They had okay. also started and revived the ajrak mm. in Barmer. Hmm. Hmm. And so this age-old uh, ajrak, hmm. where the word blue hmm. comes from, the word blue, which is Arabic, hmm. from which the word in English uh, or European languages azure comes, hmm. is Arabic. Hmm. And uh, the uh, it's interesting what the connections were, because in the pharaonic times. Uh, you painted the face of the dead blue, okay. because mm. blue was seen as uh, leading towards uh, immortality, but it also meant uh, death, because only when you died was your face painted blue. Interesting. And it was a curse, and still is. Mm. In in in, uh, in Egypt, that may your face be blue. Oh wow, that's interesting. Yes, that's you know. Mm. So the, these old traditions mm. they cling on, you mm. know, forever. And uh, this interesting thing is that this is a very old tradition mm. that India was the home of dyes mm. and uh, the art of dyeing with mm. the use of mordants mm. to create rich uh, colors mm. which would be lasting mm. uh, is nearly 5000 years ago mm. you know yeah. because in the indus valley civilization the uh, they found a piece of cotton mm. with, uh, which was dyed mm. with the use of mordants, and that takes it back to 5,000 yeah. years ago. Mm. So they, yeah. they knew cotton weaving, mm -hmm. they knew the art of dyeing, because this is chemical dye using mordants, mm -hmm. and you see, uh, they nowhere in the world had they developed mm -hmm. uh, fast uh, dyes, mm -hmm. and India was known for mm -hmm. it. And they dyed indigo, yeah. and therefore India had the reputation of being magicians. Mm -hmm. That in this what of pale white yellow, mm -hmm. they would put mm -hmm. the white cloth. And as they brought it out slowly, 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 the color would change. Mm. And then they would dip it again and it would become dark. And everybody would say, Ah, see, mm. this is the Indian magic mm. to bring color from a white water and the air. Mm. It was oxidization which was taking yeah. place and which. And uh, thus, mm. there was a tremendous demand. And these uh, 
textiles, mm -hmm. which were done in the uh, western coastal area mm -hmm. in Sindh, mm -hmm. was exported all over the world. Mm -hmm. They were exported to uh, the Middle East, they were exported to Southeast Asia, mm -hmm. and they have been found uh, in quantities, mm -hmm. in quantities. The first old pieces were found uh, in, I mean, which came to mm -hmm. our knowledge was from Fostad. Mm -hmm. And uh, then there was another uh, collection made by the uh, University Field Museum in Chicago mm -hmm. uh, at the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. And in the Red Sea ports they found innumerable mm -hmm. samples. Oh, I learned so much by looking mm -hmm. at, uh, at mm -hmm. those samples yeah. at the Field Museum because they were the blue, indigo blue. Mm -hmm. Now, indigo needs to be dyed, mm -hmm. it can't be printed, whereas Majit or the red color, uh, that can be printed mm -hmm. and so, so the outline will be mm -hmm. in black mm -hmm. and then their fill-in blocks would be and they would use resist and mordants mm -hmm. and with the use of mordants and resist, a complicated way. Mm -hmm. The uh, this complicated piece of printing and the range of designs that mm. were done was typical of the uh, this ajrak mm. and the ajrak found its way right up to Scandinavia. Oh wow! Mm. As an export, as, as an, an export, export product, item. and. Mm -hmm. uh, because Fostat was the uh, place where these textiles must have been brought and distributed to Europe, mm -hmm. it came to be known and is referred to in the European uh, literature as Fastian, after mm. Fostat, mm. you see. Mm. So uh, there's mention. Mm. Uh, about the Fastian mm -hmm. and uh, so on, which yeah. in the in like uh, eighth century uh, record in a monastery says that uh, you can that uh, priests are not allowed to use mm -hmm. the Fastian because. It's a luxury item. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. So there is a yeah. mention of that. Very interesting. Even the motifs, you worked a bit on the motifs about, yes. you worked a lot on the motifs and how they've come to develop and how different kinds well, of motifs. Well, you know, are. my uh, mm. passion is mm. for the symbolism. Right. Mm. And the first uh, fragment of the Fostat textile that I saw. Mm. Uh, was at the Calico Textile Museum, mm -hmm. which showed uh, Hamsa, the mm -hmm. swan, mm -hmm. going around the lotus, and uh, there's the there's the fish motif also, and the uh, the uh, and only a section of that is so we recreated the and we uh, as to what the mm -hmm. original design mm -hmm. might have looked at right and later on i found that this was also mm -hmm. a ritual cloth mm -hmm. made as they thought by the gods in uh, indonesia mm -hmm. especially in turaja where large pieces of this printed material. Mm -hmm. So there we were mm -hmm. working with a little tiny fragment mm -hmm. and I saw piece upon piece of beautiful patterns. Wow. So these mm -hmm. early patterns, they were influenced by the, uh, the Vedic traditions mm -hmm. or the Hindu view of life, you know. Mm -hmm. Hamsa is the golden mm -hmm. goose, the one that laid the egg 
from which in, in the story of the origin of the world created. Hamsa is also, if you, is a sacred word, mm. like Hamsa mm -hmm. is a kind of a form of meditative repetition. Hamsa has so many myriads of mm -hmm. significance and meaning. Mm -hmm. And you also found other, like the Kalpa Riksha, mm -hmm. in some of the old samples. Mm -hmm. And the Because cloud I, pattern, like you pointed out. The cloud pointed, pattern yeah. is a later introduction. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, which is Chinese influence. Mm -hmm. Because they absorbed a lot of influences. Mm -hmm. But what is very interesting is the Ajrat that we know today mm -hmm. is mostly of geometric patterns. Right. And mm -hmm. according to my understanding, that this is the Middle Eastern uh, um, influence. Okay. As mm -hmm. uh, I showed you a book mm -hmm. uh, that they worked out mm -hmm. the geometry of the design mm -hmm. and the uh, fantastic. Uh, juxtaposition and it is really like because in the uh, Islamic tradition you you are not supposed to create uh, living beings mm -hmm. whether they are plants or mm -hmm. birds or animals or something mm -hmm. uh, well uh, the so therefore you find mostly these abstract forms mm -hmm. uh, and which are worked in a geometric, or the stars. Mm -hmm. And when you travel to Kutch, mm -hmm. and in the night, in the desert, mm -hmm. you see the night sky is studded with stars, just like the Ajrat is. Mm -hmm. It is full of the star motive. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, that's very interesting. And so, so mm -hmm. you see, we always think that uh, we are very, uh, you know, we, everything began and ended in India. But uh, I feel that here we have absorbed hmm. an influence later, yes, yeah. but we have absorbed the influence. The influence of uh, trading all over the world or the craftsman own faith, in, several in different the factors. Of hmm. the artistic traditions hmm. of, of the hmm. geometry of design. Hmm. And through architecture, uh, uh, through, through no, they hmm. must have seen the textiles and hmm. and the calligraphy hmm. and the architecture, hmm. and, you know, yeah. and also because uh, many of the people who were hmm. using these were the Maldharis and they were Muslims, hmm. so they may have preferred to uh, use these. Hmm. A geometric patterns rather than, mm. uh, you know, the floral ones or mm. the others. Right. And so they evolved these, but mm. within these they have, as you can see in this uh, wonderful exhibition, and then so many influences, like the, I pointed out, you mentioned the, the cloud motif. The cloud motif is really something which has probably been absorbed from the trade. Mm -hmm. The trade also brought mm -hmm. influences. Right. Maybe the traders said, "We want these geometric patterns." You mm -hmm. know, we, so you know they, uh, so they may have copied mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. And but they also there is a whole range of patterns as mm -hmm. such. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, one. Uh, feels enriched mm -hmm. and they have another technique which is very interesting is that dorukha, double-sided, mm -hmm. that they print yeah. uh, on both sides mm -hmm. and that's very complicated right. and, uh, and that requires a lot of expertise mm -hmm. to be able to do it mm -hmm. so that the color doesn't run mm -hmm. but is, it is printed in just the right quantity mm. to be absorbed 
mm. on the other side. Mm. So, Real technical expertise yeah. we have uh, in this exhibition as well. We have so many examples of Dorukha. So it's yeah. technically very complex. It's a technically very complex form. Yes, of print it is. Print, yeah. It is. It is. Mm. And we can, this is a great historical perspective I think that you've given us and if we move to the contemporary times, I know personally that you've been involved with the family of Mohammed Bhai and his different generations, You, I know they keep visiting you and you've been in touch, what have you noticed over the years, what are the differences in their art and how they have evolved and how they're interacting with the market now? Well, uh, they have evolved. Hmm. It's amazing, you know. Mm. I mean, Muhammad Bhai mm. worked only in cotton. Mm. The next generation started working in silk. Mm. And uh, printing of silk is more complicated, actually, and difficult. And they do, did a beautiful job mm. on it. So, uh, and those silk, uh, ajrak, saris mm. are coveted all over. Mm -hmm. uh, India as well as and the yardage material, you know, mm -hmm. it is. Yeah. Uh, and the, the locally woven gajji mm -hmm. satin mm -hmm. as well as mashru, which is cotton silk mixed. Mm -hmm. And then recently what has happened is that some of the younger generation worked with NID. Mm -hmm and as well as with designers who came from abroad. Mm -hmm. And some of the designers who came from abroad made friends with them mm -hmm. and stayed with them and they worked together. Mm -hmm. And in the process they learned the art mm -hmm. and the uh, Muhammad Bhai's grandsons also mm -hmm. uh, learned from them. Mm -hmm. And some of them joined uh, the uh, institute uh, Kalaraksha, okay. uh, which Judy Freiter and the local Kachi people had mm -hmm. started to mm -hmm. run a school of design. Mm -hmm. And in the process, which opened their minds mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to other approaches yeah. rather than the traditional approach, mm -hmm. and then they created experimenting. I mean, mm -hmm. you have in this exhibition that beautiful piece, mm -hmm. which is an abstract piece, which combines uh, blocks, which combines uh, like a, it's, a, it's a wonderful graphic. It's a piece of art. You see, we don't appreciate the the richness of our creativity of our craftspeople. In what way is this less than a painting? In no way. In no way. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And but we will not be willing to pay that extra plus. Mm -hmm. you know? yeah. I think people need to be educated. Mm -hmm. Uh, and need to understand that this is an art form which has to be appreciated. Yeah. Finally, I'd like to ask you on the same note, um, as there are more and more collaborations between contemporary designers and traditional craftsmen, like for example, this is a collaboration between students from NIFT and the Crafts Museum. So these students went out into the field, interacted with the local craftsmen. They learned a lot in the process, but they would be using what they learned as well from the craftsmen in their own uh, in their own garments, or they'll be collaborating with these craftsmen in the future. Uh, what what would you say would be some guidelines, perhaps, for these new collaborations to make it fair for the craftsmen as well as moving forward? What they should keep in mind? Uh, well, you see, this is been a big uh, <laughs> issue with me. Mm -hmm. I have felt that uh, these National Institute of Design, National Institute of Fashion Technology, and uh, various these design schools should give special opening for the, uh, the children mm -hmm. of master craftsmen. Now, 
the attitude of many of these institutes has been rather negative. They send their students and I don't think that they are also briefed properly uh, as to what they are going to look for, how are they going to conduct themselves. Uh, and uh, they come back with the, some of them I have been on their jewelry with the most weird designs which they think should be given to these people. And some of them collect, I don't know, material from where, uh, which has no relevance and which are not. Either they are um, misinterpreting them or uh, they are being made a fool of by the craft, craftsman. Sometimes that happens. But not always. In some cases, depending upon who the students are or uh, who the, the guide is, mm -hmm. they have come forward with uh, very interesting studies which have been made. Uh, and uh, you see, I personally feel like I share my knowledge with everybody. Mm. I'm not going to hang on to it because everybody uses the knowledge in their own way. Mm. So the mastery which the craftsmen have, the students, if they work a lifetime, might be able to achieve one tenth of that. But what I mean to say is that they should be given the opportunity, like this dyer printer who made such a tremendous contribution couldn't get his son admitted into the design school in Jaipur. Why? Because he had not uh, passed his school. Well, he was educated, he'd been to school, he could read and write and he was a master printer, dyer. I mean, some, they need to look at their policies. Uh, for the uh, training and especially the design institutes. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you so much, Jasleen. My pleasure. This was absolutely fascinating. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm glad.